In any event, let me go to the final point of colonia, of colony. In the first place, it's not true that the wealth or the benefits of the West derive from exploiting the colonies. The facts are against you. The reason why you say that is because it is so hard for people to get out of the notion that life is a zero-sum game. They think if one man benefits, another must lose. But in a free market, both people can benefit. Now, if you take the case of Africa, the wheel, the wheel had not been invented in parts of Africa by the end of the 19th century. The number of people in Africa and their average conditions of life in Africa have, been enormous, have grown enormously as a result of their contacts with the West. Don't know your history, sir. Well, I would say you don't know your facts, sir. They, uh, in, the case, in the case of India, which is a very famous case, if you look again at the facts, all of the studies have shown that it cost Britain more to maintain India. These are some famous studies by Jacob Viner, which went into the details of it in great detail. It, colonialism has always cost the mother country more than it ever gotten any direct or indirect economic benefits. So far as India was concerned, the history of India is divided into three periods. The period of British rule in the 19th and early 20th century, when there was very real progress in the standard of life of the people of India. The period of the 20s and the 30s, when there was a great struggle against Britain and for independence, when there was essential stagnation in India and there was no growth. The period since the creation of independence in 1948, when you have had a highly centralized government, when unfortunately it was Harold Lasky and not Adam Smith, who was the most respected intellectual figure in India, when, India, when the Indian people have, have lost, not improved, when the average amount of food and so on has been going down, not up. The people of India have been worse off under independent, non-colonial government than they had been before. So, colonialism. Well, first of all, where is, do you have colonialism today? You have the classic, the classic colonialism behind the Eastern, behind the Iron Curtain. You have Russia, which is a master country. I mean, uh, not the Union of Socialist Soviet Republics, but Russia, which is a master country with a great colony around it within the Soviet Union in Poland, in Czechoslovakia, in Hungary. That's the great example today of your classic kind of colonialism. The United States, with trivial exceptions, has never been a colonial country. It did have Philippines. It had Philippines for a while. Cuba was not a colony of the United States. In any event, in any event, you need a sense of proportion. In the period between, uh, the, uh, between the revolution in 1776 and 1898, the U.S. had no colonies. And yet the U.S., that was a period of the greatest growth and the greatest economic development of the United States. Mexico? Your question.